Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lunguva with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to God's View of Secular Music Part 1 of 2. I think we've reacted to a couple about music and this is a different video, so why not react to it without wasting time? Let's get into the video. I say this is God's view of secular music to say that God and His Word are the real source behind this message. This was not just some idea that I came up with on my own. We're going to look at secular music from a biblical perspective, and I will show you in Scripture where all this stuff comes from. First things first though, I need to define what this word secular really means. Secular means of or pertaining to worldly things or to things that are not regarded as religious, spiritual, or sacred. So when we're talking about secular music, we're referring to music that is of or from the world. Let me start off by saying this will not be an easy message for some of you to digest because music is such a touchy subject, either because it is really important to you or you actually have control over your own music choices and you don't want anyone telling you what to do. Well, I'm not going to do that, but what I am going to do is present to you a biblical point of view, God's view, on music and challenge you in your music decisions. I'm not talking about styles of music here. No style of music is more right or wrong than another. So what's the big deal with music then? Why are we even taking time to even bother talking about this? Well, music has the power to influence us. We conducted a survey with our youth group and we found that almost everyone acknowledged that music affects or influences them in some way. And rightfully so, because from a secular, worldly point of view, for example, MTV's producers proudly proclaim that they are a cultural force. People don't watch it, they live it. MTV has affected the way a whole generation thinks, talks, and buys. They went on to say, the strongest appeal you can make is emotional. If you can make them forget their logic, you've got them. At MTV, we don't shoot for the 14-year-olds, we own them. MTV is so very confident that they have your generation pretty much under their control. And why? They're so confident because they know that music does affect and influence us. Well, how about we look at this, uh, the effects of music from a more scientific perspective. In Scientific American, they are quoted saying, music has an undeniable power over mind and body. It is the most direct and mysterious way of conveying and evoking feeling. In addition, tunes may work to our benefit on an individual level, manipulating mood and even human physiology more effectively than words can. Now did you catch what that quote said? It said that tunes can work to our benefit. This isn't even talking about uh, words or lyrics and how they can also influence us. This is just talking about how music can manipulate us and it can influence us. You know, what more, what more proof do we need that, yes, music can be used to influence us? And not even music with words. How much more then can words tied to music influence us? So, okay, music influences us. All right. So big deal. Perhaps you're still asking, so then what's so wrong with secular music? Well, how about we look at this from a more spiritual point of view now? What does the Bible say about where music came from? There are three archangels spoken of in the Bible, each one of them having a definite purpose and specific area of responsibility. You have Michael, who is in charge of waging war. You have Gabriel, who is in charge of proclamations, bringing messages from God to man. And then you have Lucifer, who is in charge of music in heaven. This is a key point to recognize as it helps to shape our view of music. There is ample evidence in the Bible through the books of Ezekiel, Job, Isaiah, and even Psalms that speak of Lucifer, Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him, 
as being the minister of music in heaven. There's verses like Isaiah 14, 11 through 14, and Ezekiel 28, 13 through 16. So since music was originally designed to worship God, it has two basic forms. Music that worships God and music that does not. There are only two spiritual sources for music, light or darkness. There is no gray area when it comes to spiritual things. Now hold up, you say. Since God is good and he made everything, including music, then all music must be good since God made it, right? Wrong. You fail to read Isaiah 45, 7, which says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. The absence of light is darkness. The absence of heat is cold. Just because God made something good doesn't mean that when his presence is removed from it, that it is still good. The same concept applies to music. It too can be a tool of darkness. Don't forget that Lucifer, Satan, the devil, was in charge of music in heaven, and he was very skilled at it. This is important to know and remember because now instead of using music to worship God, Satan uses it as a medium to draw people away from him. If the music you listen to is not leading you into the presence of God, then it is potentially leading you to the world and feeding you a worldly message. And that's a problem because the Bible says that we know that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but it is of the world. All of these things are of the world, which we already know was under the control of the evil one. And are not these the very things that the majority of secular music is about today? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life? Think about this. If secular, worldly artists are producing music, is it not possible that what they produce is under a worldly influence from a worldly perspective? Of course it is. In his book, Live God Loud, Ron Luce said, Secular musicians have taken the gifts that God gave them and are using them for themselves. Actually, they are often using them for the devil because many times they are presenting ideas that are not from the Lord. And if they are not of, from the Lord, then there is only one other source. That source is the world, or better stated, Satan, since we know he is in control of this world. Are you not convinced yet that, as a Christian, you need to give up secular music because of the negative, worldly influence that it can have on your life? In our media survey, half of our youth group said that they could not give up listening to secular music. What is this hold that the world has on us? Does Christian music sound that bad that we choose the world's instead? I don't think that's it, because in our survey only one of them said that Christian music is not as good as secular worldly music. So then why? Why do we choose to listen to the world's music and its message and let it have its influence on us? As Christians, which we know is Christ-like, we are held to a higher standard. The Bible says we are to be set apart from the world, that we are to be different from the world, that we are not to conform to the pattern of this world. So why do we think this doesn't include music? God's word says to keep yourself free from the world's evil influence. And the world's music can definitely have an evil influence on our lives. Here's an obvious example. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this label. It's the PAL logo, the Parental Advisory label. Music with this PAL logo is defined as containing strong language and or depiction of violence, sex, or substance abuse to such an extent that parental discretion is advised. There's absolutely no excuse for listening to this kind of music. But yet this kind of music is so popular, yet it can so negatively affect people and their lives. I watched a video on bluefishtv.com in which Craig Allen shared his story of how he not only grew up in a bad area, but he said he was also influenced by secular music and the messages it poured into his life. He said, I just saw the need for young people to have positive, inspirational music to listen to, rather than music that just talked about violence, sex, drugs, all the things that was just bringing them down. 
I know how powerful music is and how it's helped to change my life. He then started making music that could be used to positively change people's lives, to show them how awesome God is, and to give people music they could share their faith with. So let me ask you, can you use your music to share your faith about Jesus? Do the songs you listen to and the bands and artists you listen to help you share your faith? If the music you listen to is bleeped on the radio, if it speaks of ungodly things, or if the music videos you watch contain sinful or even questionable material, then the answer is definitely no. If we listen to secular music, music that is not God-focused, or by artists that are not God-focused, we are allowing their worldly message and their ideas to get into our minds and manipulate us from the inside out. No, 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 no. Music doesn't affect me, you say. I I can listen to whatever music I want and not be affected by it. Sure you can. Have you ever stopped to think about how your music choices influence other people? What about your Christ-like example that should be on display before other people? Out here outside the BET Awards. Yes, it's going to be a great event today. Everybody, it's going to be a great event. Can't wait to see uh, my homie T.I., you know, Sean Combs, you know, Monique. She's going to be doing it, uh, hosting the show. So it's going to be a hot show. It's going to be lovely. 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 All right, cool. So um, who in particular are you looking forward to seeing tonight? Honestly, um... Some T.I. If he if, if T.I. performs tonight, Young Jeezy, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm more of like a hip-hop head, so I like hip-hop. Um, yeah, you know. But yeah, yeah, you know, I like T.I. T.I.'s cool. <laughs> Loved him in ATL. You know, he, he's, he's a real dude. You know, he's a real dude. And then Jeezy, I mean, Jeezy's cool. You know what I'm saying? So Jeezy likes to rap. Jeezy likes to smoke. Jeezy, you know what I'm saying? I know Jeezy's cool. Jeezy's cool. So okay. Okay. All right. Let me ask you something else on a flip mode. Um, are you a Christian by any chance? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. <laughs> Jeezy's cool. You know what I'm saying? So Jeezy likes to rap. Jeezy likes to smoke. Jeezy, you know what I'm saying? I know. Jeezy's cool. Jeezy's cool. <laughs> Jeezy's cool. Jeezy's cool. Got my 87 so God damn it, I'm fly. Jeezy's cool. Jeezy's cool. Do, are you a Christian by any chance? Yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Okay. Yes, I am. All right. How long you been a Christian? Uh, Christian, been a Christian for mm, maybe like 10 years, 10 years. Well, the Bible speaks about like no fornicator entering into his kingdom, no liar, no thief, no murderer, no adulterer, which is even lust of the heart, no idolater. Murder is even just hating your brother without cause. Um, and then the Bible also says for us not only to, um, to partake in those things, but not to approve of people that partake in those various things. So what, like, what do you have to say to that? Well, I mean, if they're, if they're not saved, I'm not going to knock what they're doing. Because in the long run, yeah, it's not positive, but it's, it's still a job. So, but the, uh, these songs do, in fact... Well, I mean, I, I see it like this, you know what I'm saying? Yes, that is secular music. It's not positive, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to go to hell for, I mean, listening to secular music. I feel that I listen to gospel, yeah, I'm saved. And, I mean, I don't listen to all the other artists. I mean, because you got I me, mean, you got some artists out there that are really bad. You know what I'm saying? But I don't, I feel that they're more commercial, a little watered down. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I don't feel that if what you're saying, as far as you being a Christian and all that, I don't feel that there's anything wrong. Murder you first and I kill the trap. I don't feel that there's anything, that there's anything um, wrong. Okay, the Bible talks about all that call upon the name of the Lord have to flee from iniquity. And it also says to be a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. So, like, what do you think that means? Um, I, well, I really, I really can't say much on that. I understand what you guys are saying, but you guys got to understand that just because you see these people, you see the, the glitz and glamour, yeah, if they don't know the Lord, if they don't get it together, yeah, you're right. They are going to, you know, perish. You know what I'm saying? But I don't feel that I should shine away or I should, you know what I'm saying? Now, of course, I'm not going to hang with someone that, that smokes weed, that drinks, that, that does that kind of stuff. Jeezy like to rap. Jeezy like to smoke. Jeezy, you know what I'm saying? I know. Jeezy's cool. Jeezy's cool. Now, of course, I'm not going to hang with someone that, that smokes weed, that drinks, that, that does that kind of stuff. The last thing I was expecting was for this uh, video to be uh, Christian, from a Christian perspective. But very, very interesting. I mean, the people out there that are saying music is bad and people really don't understand it. 
on a different level it affects our emotions the way we do things and all sorts of things what we're not realizing is what we feed ourselves is what we become if we're feeding ourselves with music that's always boasting about worldly things we ourselves are going to want to live that life and actually start boasting out there if it's going to be about uh being violent we're going to get violent because that's what we've put in our head and it's a message that we keep on listening to all the time so we go out there in the world and actually um do it it's all sorts of things there is music that is worldly and music that's entirely dedicated to god it's up to you to um to choose what you want to listen to at this stage we have to be very very careful with what we listen to and how much we're exposing our souls to that and anyway the music just has a strong hold that we need to understand and i think when it comes to music we should be taught some of these things why are we not being taught that music actually affects us on a very very big level let me know what you guys think and a big shout out to the person that suggested this make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video